Palmer. It is so good to have you here with me on tonight's show. It is a New Year's Eve special and we are joined by the real thing. Here is what happened when I caught up with Chris and Dave. Chris and Dave, it's great to have you here on New Year's Eve. How exciting is this? Fantastic, fantastic. We're going to be okay. singing yeah. along yeah. in yeah. a couple of minutes' time. We yeah. want everyone at home to be singing along full blast. There's no excuses. Singing along to real thing songs. That's the deal on tonight's yeah. show. Love yeah. it. But how are you do guys doing? It's been 50 years, I've yeah. read. How it's has been, that happened? It's been very difficult, if you ask me. Oh. Being with him for 50 years has been terrible, it's been awful. It'll be all right in another 50, another 50 will be good. We got to, we got to. That's what I love about you guys. I was saying earlier, I was like, you guys just must know like everything about each other, it's brilliant. Yeah, I know some things about it. Why do you think we've been together so long? He didn't leave and could have given you before, man. Okay. So we're here at Milton Keynes. You've played this venue before, haven't you? Yeah, this so is a, this is a good venue. It's a good yeah. venue. We love this venue. And a very loyal following you've got, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, this was owned by Cleo Lane, wasn't it? Her husband Johnny Dankworth, who's a great saxoph saxophonist. And um, I think Cleo's still got something to do with it. I don't know. Do you? Yeah. yeah, I think. So. But it's a lovely jazz gig. This is one mm. you get where you get all the jazzers on this this gig, and yeah. yeah. But they put on like popular music as well. Um, so this is one that we did this like maybe once a year. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's just a really great venue. It's great lovely. stage, great lights. Mm -hmm. Engineer, the engineers here are great, really helpful. It's Good teamwork. Yeah, we like excellent that. venue. Well, we're going to go into uh, You To Me Are Everything. This is a song that I like to have on my earphones as I'm in the gym. I know that's crazy, yeah. but it just yeah. makes but me makes feel, feel good, really honestly. good. And I yeah. think that's what I love about this song is that everyone's got a reason behind it. People are like, oh, I got married to that song or, yeah. you know, or my yeah. birthday. or It brings out so many memories. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Do, do people say that to you quite a lot? All the time. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. It's, it's, just uh, got magic, it's been it? fantastic for, for, for the group over the years. You don't realise when you record the song just what it's going to end up being. And... Um, it's fantastic, you know, that so many people have got great memories when they listen to it. Isn't it? And when you do hear it, like if you're sat down at a Christmas party, like how can you sit down to it? It's not possible, is it? As soon as that first beat kicks in, don't you yeah. think it's one of those songs that everyone just goes, dance floor, right, yeah. immediately? Except us, because that's... Yeah, apart from you guys, again, we've sung this too much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we, um, we first got the first demo, because when you used to record a record back then, you used to have like, things called white labels. <clears throat> used to take them round to send them round to people to listen to before they were released. I always remember I took it down to our favourite place in Liverpool, the Timepiece Club. And I was with my friend Les and he was the DJ there and he put it on. And the whole dance floor just filled up, which was very unusual because nobody knew the song. Mm. It was the first play it ever had and the dance floor just mm. filled. Well, when we first heard it, we knew that it had something, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, you, you heard it first. Away. You brought it to us when we were at some gig somewhere. Yeah. You were in the office, you heard it. Some, uh, when Ken, brought in, Ken yeah. Gold came into yeah. the office with the song. And Just we heard like, it. Yes. We met up in the evening and he played it to us. And it was like, that's got something. That is magic. That Very song. special indeed. And what was it like when you got that number one? Because that's what you guys want. You know, it's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. So what was that feeling? I believe you got a phone call, didn't you? It's fantasy land, wasn't it? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's the best thing that's ever happened to you in your life, isn't it? I mean, that's... Yeah. It's the, the Cheshire cat, cat syndrome. We, the cat got all the cream. <laughs> you know, it was big smiles. I mean, it, it, you can't describe it. It's one of those... It was the best thing that had ever happened to us in our lives. I mean, mm. we were four guys from the ghetto in Liverpool where we were still living. And you get a phone call to say you're in the charts, you're doing Top of the Pops. I mean, that's it. I, what more Life can you complete. say? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what more can you yeah. say? Wow, wow. We're going to check out uh, the video. We want everyone up on your feet at home. We absolutely love this song here on the show. Here it is. Uh, you to me are everything. You're the sweetest song that I can sing. Oh, baby. Guess I need you, baby. Yeah! Oh, baby! 
to me There must be some other way to make you see If it takes my heart and soul, you know I pay the price Everything that I possess, I gladly sacrifice Oh, you to me are everything The sweetest song that I can sing, oh baby Oh baby To you I guess I'm just a clown who picks you up each time you got on Just a taste of love to build my hopes upon You know you've got the power, girl, to keep me holding on So now you've got the best of me Come on and take the rest of me, oh baby Yeah I'm just a clown who picks you up and tie me down Oh, baby, oh, baby You give me just a taste of love to build my hopes upon You know you've got the power, girl, to keep me holding on So now you've got the best of me Come on and take the rest of me, oh, baby Yeah Can you do that? Can you do that? One, two, sing it. You to me are the sweet. Now, I want to talk about your new studio album. Mm -hmm. This is very exciting. New material. It's what we want to hear from the real thing. Um, so, Chris, tell us more about it. Uh, well, basically, for the last 40 years, we've never been able to actually physically get into a studio mm. and do record what we were creating. Basically, because um, record company r companies had complete control over that side of you, of your career. And if they weren't interested, it wasn't really possible to go in and record. So Eddie and I were writing a lot of st stuff which we, were, we, which we were doing on stage, but that was it, and then it was on a shelf. Mm -hmm. um, so before, uh, uh, many years before Eddie died, we were always sort of planning on, in some way, trying to get some new material on a platform that people could listen to. And that opportunity came along with the technology that was building at the time, which enabled you to take control of your own creativity. Mm. 
And this all came about basically, it came to a head in lockdown. Yeah. We had so much time in our hands. The only good thing to come out of COVID yeah. for Absolutely. us yes. was... You had that time and no time. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Eddie had died, you know, uh, two years previous. And it took Dave and I quite a while to get over that and get back to the creative side of things. Like, we got our stage show together, which was something that we had to do, and we did. But as far as, like, actually thinking about getting it, our new songs onto a platform... That was another thing, but that came during lockdown. Mm. And uh, I was able to sit down and pen a lot of new songs. And how do you go about that? Because I mean, I won't have a clue about writing songs. Do you kind of have to be in the right mood or how do you go about yeah. it? Yeah. You have to be in the mood. Right. Um, it's not, I can't just, like somebody can't just say, right, Chris, I want you to go and meet up with Ken and come up with some tunes or something like that. I can't write like that. It has to be, I might not write anything for three or four months, six months. And then all of a sudden, I'll listen to one of our older ideas, like maybe I was working on with Ed. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm, I'll bring that back up today. But then that gets the juices flowing again. Yeah. The creative juices You're in the zone. flowing. I like and it. you get in the zone and like you sort of, you start coming up with ideas and then, you know, play them to Dave and Dave would be sort of grooving along. And it's like, all of a sudden, we had it all in our own hands because um, I could record the stuff at home. Mm -hmm. Then we'd send my parts to me, which oh. is the great thing about technology today. Isn't it just? I yeah. mean, you, I, you're you talking to someone that's not technical here, but I can imagine yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like getting it just all done. Just send it down the line yeah. and you yeah. sing your parts to the track. Yeah. Send it back to Chris. And then I could put it together. And the producers. Yeah, and we'd get the band. I'd say, you know, basically we'd sort of talk to the band it's and fantastic say, this is what we want. Out. This is yeah. how I see it. And um, so gradually then it all comes together. We've got everything on online on tape yeah. and yeah. then i'll send it to our engineer graham and um he'll mix it and sort of get those sounds correct and then all of a sudden you've got an album you've got yeah. something, got something viable like, yes. that you've got a platform and that's what it is that's a brand new day that you sounds like my kind of song yeah i like yeah. that um we want everyone to check out the album we are going to put details on the screen below of how you can check it out uh, enjoy this and we'll see you after When you're down and weary And your life's filled with gloom And you sit there all alone In that four-corner room Take a look out your window There's a light that shines To show you the way
show we want you to elaborate on okay? okay little new year's eve special here we go so fact number one uh chris you were a dog breeder and won best show at crufts true i did that's completely true in 1987 i was no 1986 oh, are you what sure about 1987? that 1986 or 1987. We believe him, don't we? <laughs> I won best in show at Crufts with That's an Afghan hound. That's when back into the chart, 86. Yes, yeah, so it was 87. 87 yeah. it was. 87? Yeah. Last yeah. answer? Okay, 87. There we go. I love that. Yeah. Funny mm. enough, as Dave just pointed out, I'd won Pup of the Year the year before with the oh. same dog, and all the TV stations were all playing you to me while they were talking about me running around winning with this puppy. And that's what sparked off the interest to re-release the song. So they re-released the song in 1987 and it went back in the top five and I was best in show crops. There we go. Did you know that? Next fact. Uh, the fact is uh, you were working with the Jacksons at the Rainbow Theatre. Is that true? We, that was true, yeah. That was 1979 when we just released Can, Can, you, Can feel you Feel the Force? The Force? Yeah. yeah. And that was a buzz because we went in in the afternoon to do the sound check. Mm -hmm. The Jacksons were already there doing their sound check. We were just sitting in the audience, no one else in, just us, the Jacksons on stage, and they were just running their, their set. Mean, and it was like, I could listen to these like stories all day. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, can we be there? Yeah, it was a real buzz. That, that day we sold 49,000 records with yeah. Can You Feel the Force? In one day. In one day? In one day. It was yes. madness. In one day. That is insane. Back then. Okay, yeah. next yeah. fun <laughs> fact. Uh, Chris, Muhammad Ali is your idol. Absolutely. There we go. Best so I've done my research. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the best. Um, did you meet him? Yes, he's the you best did, yeah. role model, black person, anything you want to say that we've I've ever met. He was absolutely so amazing a person. Aww. Yeah. You know, when he spoke to you, he spoke to you. Mm. rather than he's speaking to you but his mind's on something else. Yeah. See, yes. we love a few fun facts on this show. But we are going to go into Can't Get By Without You. Another song that just gives me goosebumps, literally. I absolutely love this. Uh, now, this was released in 1976. Uh, it reached number two, mm -hmm. should have reached number one. But I think you were up against Paul McCartney. There was quite a lot of uh, so, really big... Was Abba it and everyone. Was it? There was, was Abba, yeah, yeah, there was yeah. Abba, there was McCartney. Mm. I uh, think um, Rod Stewart. Yeah, it was quite a top, yeah. Yeah. top five, and stayed the same for three well, weeks. We weren't being, we being greedy. We were happy with two. He was happy with that. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Can't you understand? Sing it. Ah. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. It's a sad affair. Wasting precious time that you and I could share. Girl, it's such a crime to get you call my name. It's a crying shame. When we're not together, then there's only time to play. There will come a day. Girl, I do believe it's not too far away. We're in constant questions of our lovely viewers at home. So, Maggie says, uh, what is your ritual before you go on stage? Um, I don't really have a ritual. Do um, you? It's just, just take it easy? Yeah, we get to gigs mm. quite early. because like we what, have four o'clock? Four o'clock, right. yeah, because yeah. we have a lot Sound to do. Check, yeah. And I'll either be creating or just reading. That's what I do. That's what, what I do, same. Yeah. Just, just do you. Chill out, like, podcast, I thought it was going to be more rock and roll. No. No, no that's them good. Them days are gone. Like, <laughs> them days are gone. <laughs> They're back in the 70s, 80s. We're Do more you more grown eat up. Eat afterwards or before a gig? Like no, 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 something we've never done, innit? Yeah, I like to eat afterwards. Eat, yeah, yeah. after the gig, yeah, but not before. Yeah, too Maybe much. lunch if it's earlier on, 12, yeah. or 1 o'clock or something. Sorry, but it's only because I'm hungry, I just have to ask yeah. these questions. <laughs> Brilliant. You know, <laughs> you know, can I just say that as far as rituals go, there's a difference between rock and roll and being a vocal group. Because with a vocal group like what we are, everything relies on your throat. Yeah, I think and it, the worst thing that thing. you can do is go all rock and roll with your throat. Right, yeah, mm. you've got to look after to be it, quite haven't honest. you? Yeah. Now, there were days, like Dave was saying, when we were a lot younger, when you didn't really care, basically. You just used to be out there, you, you just sing your heart out, you know, and you'd have a few drinks and things like that. But if you want to preserve your throat, you can't do that. It's just, you just can't do it. Is it honey and lemons you have to drink or? Dave drinks lemon. Do you? Yeah, honey and lemon, yeah. yeah. But I'm it's a okay at the moment. It's usually when, um, it it was, it was when we were off them last two years for the, over the COVID and coming back onto the road, it took me about three months, mm. four Did months. The... And I had to drink a lot of honey and lemon oh. after gigs and before gigs because we yeah, hadn't so had really there. sung out yeah. in yeah. two years. We, we were recording stuff, but you didn't have to sing out, mm. project. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and, you to, and you had to learn how to smile again, didn't you? And smile. Yes, <laughs> was, yeah, that was, yes, yeah. Now, that was the most that difficult. Was, that was so... Because yeah. you, you're so used to sitting there, part. COVID. Oh, oh there's another 100,000. Yeah. Oh, there's another 50,000 gone. Oh, 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 there you go. Oh, so by the time dear, you go back onto dear, stage again, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, smile it's, again. Yeah. Exactly. Again, you know? But it comes yeah. naturally back, I'm sure, when well, you've done it for so long. Yeah. You're pros. Yeah, it took a while, but... Um, He's you know, back. We're back. He's back. I knocked him into we're shape. Yeah. And Dave would like to know, who came up with the name The Real Thing? Because... Uh, you were called Vocal Perfection previously, weren't you? That was our manager. Tony, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, we, we, we were on Opportunity Knox. And Payback. we were on Opportunity Knox as Vocal Perfection. Which is like today's X Factor. OK. So there was only four channels back in the day, 70s. They were good days, and yeah. And that was one of the major okay. talent programmes on well, ITV. Was the was major Thames, one, yeah. yeah. Thames TV. Thames TV. It was the... Yeah. And he was driving around. Our manager was very well known in the music business. It's a very serious, seriously. Um, and he said to us, look, because we're only really raw and young. Mm. He said, I think the vocal perfection could cause a little bit of aggro for you because you're not vocally perfect at the oh, moment. You're harsh. too raw. OK, oh, OK. You're too raw to be vocally perfect. And he said, you know, people can sort of, like, come down on you for it. Mm. So he said, we need a new name. And he was driving around Piccadilly. And the big Coca-Cola sign, it's the real thing, it came up. It used to flash up and down. Yeah. I think it's still, I don't know if it's still. No, it's gone now. Um, and so that's how the name, the real thing, was born. Oh, that's how we got it. I love that story. I didn't know that. Yeah. Another fun fact here on the show. Uh, then we're going to go into Children of the Ghetto. David, is this your favourite song? This is one of my favourites. It is. This is like one of those socially conscious songs. Just about the um, the area where we grew up. Um, just um, talking about that area and that time. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's been recorded by so many artists, hasn't it? I've got here yeah. uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, Mary J. Blige. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on. It's, it's, well, Chris it's, wrote it, that with it, it, Eddie. It, it, it's, actual, it's actually... The list is endless, um, especially like a lot of the young hip hop artists uh, are always covering it now within the rap. And um, 
it's just one of them so songs that is so relevant now. It's as relevant now as it was back then. And we were very influenced um, by American black artists like Marvin Gaye, Curtis Mayfield, who were all doing these socially conscious songs. And, you know, we thought, well, you know, we come from the same type of an area as they come from, the ghetto in New York, except that our ghetto was in Toxteth in Liverpool. And we just felt that it was time that we started writing about our experiences mm. growing up in our ghetto. And that has, is how Children of the Ghetto was, uh, was born. It's a very serious song. Mm. Um, it's the most important song that we do. Mm. And it's... Um, Dave and I, when we do it now, we always dedicate it to Eddie and Ray. Mm. Um, Ray was the original singer with a beautiful version. And then Eddie took over. And then now me and Dave do it, and it's it will always be with us. And like I say, we always it's dedicate it. Yeah. It's all anthem. Yeah, yeah, we dedicate well, it to Eddie and Ray. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah.
I want to talk plans 2023 a little birdie told me that you guys are performing at the london palladium which is such a special venue isn't it you haven't performed there before have you no we've never performed in the palladium and it's an iconic place oh, yeah. and dave and i are absolutely mm. over the moon that we're coming there i want to be there um it's, it's going to be amazing it's yeah. going to be we're working there with gwen dickey's rolls royce and um, Gwen is the singer on all the songs, Wishing on a Star, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, Car Wash, all them. So it's going to be a great soul evening. But, you know, the real thing, I've never worked a theatre in London. See, I can't believe that. Yeah, it's weird. We've worked the Jazz Cafe and clubs. We've worked Earl's Court. We've worked Wembley. We've worked the Hammersmith Odeon. But mm. we've never worked a theatre. The theatre. Mm. And this is the first time. Um, and we think it's about time. So yes. It's going to be great, you know. Tickets are going fantastically mm. well. So. Yes, we're going to put details on the screen. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there having a little boogie. Yeah. We'll we're looking out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tall, you can't miss me, honestly. <laughs> you're already. You. Uh, and also, you have got more of your tour lined up. You're going all over the country, aren't you? Yeah, well, we're just about winding down now for the Christmas. I think we've got a few yeah, more Yeah, you had to have a Christmas do. off, but yeah. 2023. Yeah. yeah, then we take huge couple of weeks off in the beginning of the year just yeah. to, just just to, to chill. chill and kick back a bit and well, we chop up one sun. We used to take two months, didn't we, Dave? Yeah. Did you? We to yeah, we always, when Eddie year. was alive, we always used to take um, two months off because he used to go to Australia to visit uh, his children oh, okay. uh, and family over there. Yeah. And so Dave and I used to yeah. really enjoy that rest, but yeah. I don't know, we just wanted to get back into it. You of know? course, yeah. Um, and so we don't really have that now. If Dave yeah, wants to go away on holiday, yeah. well, then we go we'll away on you. holiday. Mm. If I go on he holiday, we go away on holiday. He's preparing the roof, roofs for oh, Crofts. for Crofts, which for is crofts, in, yeah, so. in March, isn't it? March, yeah. yeah, I'll be going to Crofts. Mm. And we've got a, a, a amazing... Um, already we've got about, what, 50 gigs? Really? Uh, uh, festivals and theatres yeah. uh, for wow. 23. And you can get them on our Facebook page. Yes. Um, and, um, mm. yeah, it's going to be a very, very, very busy year. Exciting. Yeah. Then you can put your feet up again next year. Well, hopefully. Mm. Hopefully. We'll let you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let you have some time off. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go into Hang On, Never Let Go. Yeah. Uh, talk us through this song. Well, that was the first single from our yes. brand new album. Yes. And it's a song that we originally recorded in America. Um, but we didn't like the way they actually did it. We don't think they captured the song. We don't think they captured um, the sound of the group. So we always thought that it was such a strong song that we want to completely redo it. And so that was one song yeah. that Eddie and I had written a long time ago, which that we That was always today. part of our stage show, wasn't yeah. it? It was in our stage yeah. show in the 70s, 80s. We yeah. just loved singing the song and it was great yeah. to get it on vinyl, well, not yeah. vinyl, to get it uh, yeah. recorded yeah. properly. So it's, um, like I say, it's the, it's, it is the first single from our brand new album. And here it is.
Guys, we're going to go into the last song, which is Can You Feel the Force? This is a classic, isn't it? This is New Year's Eve, guys. If you're sat down right now, I'm not impressed. I want you off your seats right now because this song is a tune, isn't it? It is a tune. And in all honesty, it's probably, as far as creatively goes, the poppiest thing you're going to get from Real Thing as Real Thing. It's, it's not like you to me and it's not like Can't Get By and whenever you're up my love. Yeah, it's, it's more vibe. like yeah. what it's more like what Eddie and I were writing at the time and what the group were performing at the time. And it's got such a vibe to yeah. it, you know. It's yeah. good dance floor fill it, isn't it? Um, oh, it's our favourite um, pop yeah. one. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Out of all the pop I mean, ones, yes. it's yeah. our favourite one. Yes, so we're going to hear that the, out yeah. uh, on the show right now. But we, guys, this is, carry on. Yeah, but we only wrote it to end the stage shows. Oh, I see. Yeah, because we didn't feel that you to me were always gone down fantastically well, but we always felt that it was a little bit down tempo to actually end your show on. You so need something that leaves everyone on the high. We wanted something like really sort of, you know, yeah. getting them on the on the dance floor and things like that. And that's how we came up with Feel the Force. Oh, it was really this was inspired song. by the Star Wars movie. Can yeah. you feel the force? Yeah. Listen to the intro on it. I mean, that's so sci-fi. That intro is. Oh. Well, we're going to play it that seems. out on the show. I've left it to last on that basis because we want everyone up. Um, but this has been a brilliant interview, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, been it. it's, it's been great. It's been great Thank to you have know. you here. Yeah, uh, New Year's Eve, we're so lucky to have you guys here on the show. I'm going to let you go to have your honey and lemon read <laughs> before you go on stage. Yeah, uh, but yeah. we want to remind everyone, sure. don't we, that you can check out uh, the Real Things album. You can check out the tour next year. You can check out the London Palladium. Yeah. Just, just check out the then. Facebook. Make sure you do that right now. But guys, um, thank you so much. This has been so exciting. Been thank you so pleasure. much. It's the Have round thing, everyone. Happy New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year, everyone.
Happy New Year. Yeah. All the best. Huge thank you, Chris and Dave from The Real Thing, just for making this show really special. And uh, we wish you a very happy New Year's Eve. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. Stay safe. I'm Hayley Palmer, and I'll see you then. Yeah.